Yay, welcome back. Okay, today we're looking at Psalm 131. This is day three of our Week in Ascent Psalms. Let's open with prayer. Ah, oh, Lord, we thank you and praise you for your presence. Lord, you are the vine, we are the branches, and you just extend so much grace to us. Be gracious to us now as we dig into this short but sweet and power-packed psalm. Uh, may you, yeah, enlighten our eyes. In the name of Jesus, amen. Okay, short but sweet and power-packed. <laughs> O oh Lord, my heart is not lifted up. My eyes are not raised high. I do not occupy myself with things too great and too marvelous for me. But I have calmed and quieted my soul like a weaned child with its mother. Like a weaned child is my soul within me. O oh Israel, hope in the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. <laughs> All right, so I thought, you know, well, this is only three verses. It's going to take me zero time to complete this, but I have spent a good chunk of time because there is so much in here. Maybe it was just speaking to me personally. Of course, I wanted to know who is the who, and we see the psalmist is speaking to Yahweh, and this psalm is written by David, and he uses this personal pronoun of I. So we have Yahweh, we have David, and we have Israel. Oh, Israel in verse 3. So this is a combination of a personal psalm and a communal psalm, which is a little bit unique, right? I think in our individualistic society, we tend to focus on ourselves. Our lives often revolve around I, 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 me, me, me. But we know that within Christ, within the family of God, it's about we. Um, and one of these days, this will, you know, sink down into my head and into my heart, I hope and pray. All right, so how does the psalmist, how does David describe himself? All right, friends, this is powerful. Number one, he says, my heart is not lifted up. Number two, okay, so why don't I go ahead and understand these as I go through them? Uh, my heart is not proud. When I look lifted up, it means to be proud, to become overly confident in one's abilities, greatness, or worth. So think about it. David is king, right? So he could have a lot of confidence in his own worth. Oh, well, I'm king. Uh, he could have a lot of confidence in his own abilities. He won a, a, a good number of battles, right? But David knows this was of the Lord. Um, and so anyway, David says, my heart is not proud. Um, which means he's, he's saying, look, my heart is humble. My heart is lowly before the Lord. All right, so then he says in the second cola of that first uh, first verse, he says, my eyes are not raised too high. So he does not have haughty eyes. Again, he's saying, I am not proud. I am not proud. Uh, there were some beautiful cross references for raised to be this idea and this other word for to be proud. Uh, Psalm 101 verse 5 says, whoever slanders his neighbor secretly, I will destroy. Whoever has a haughty look and arrogant heart, I will not endure. That is the Lord speaking. And, um, you know, so I just asked, oh my, what can this kind of pride look like that David is speaking to? Friend, it can look like slandering our neighbor behind their back. It could look like saying things behind their back, especially saying false things or malicious things that would hurt somebody's good reputation. Uh, David knows this kind of pain. Uh, speak, people have slandered him behind his back almost his entire life. 
Um, so what else to, okay, so I also, I wanted to understand this just a little bit more, what this haughtiness of eyes can look like. Friends, it's marked by arrogance, by this attitude of superiority or disdain of others, especially if we view their views as unworthy. And I just thought, oh my goodness, wow. I mean, Christians are appearing this way right now all over the world, but especially in our country. Uh, we have this reputation of having disdain for those whose views are different from ours, and we deem their views as unworthy. And, and I just say, wow, we need humility. We need the humility of Jesus Christ that Paul talks about in Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. And so I just, I, I mean, right then and there, I just pray, Lord, have mercy. Okay, so David says he has, his heart is not lifted up. His eyes are not raised too high. And he's saying, look, I'm not proud. I am humble of heart. I am humble in my thoughts, humble in my eyes. I'm not looking down on disdain upon others. And then he says, I do not occupy myself with things too great and too marvelous for me. So this took me to Job, uh, Job 42, 3, where we see Job's confession after God rebukes him. And he says, oh, I have uttered what I did not understand, things too wonderful for me, which I did not know. So David, David here says, look, I do not occupy myself with things too great and too marvelous for me. I don't, I don't occupy myself with God's work. Uh, and, and I think this is once again speaking to doing things in our own ability, thinking too highly of ourselves, our own ability. Uh, we have learned in these Psalms, look, we, our strength is useless, right? Our strength is useless apart from the Lord. And that is what David is saying here. He's saying, look, I, uh, I, I don't occupy myself with those things that are of the Lord's work. But he says in verse two, I have calmed and quieted my soul like a weaned child with its mother. Like a weaned child is my soul within me. Like a weaned child with its mother. Like a weaned child is my soul within me. I just, it touches my heart. Sorry, I got distracted there. Just being touched all over again. To be calm is to compose, is, is to calm one's uh, disposition. To be quieted is to make calm or still. Uh, this takes me to Psalm 4610. Be still and know that I am God. Those are, that's God's words to Israel. Be still and know that I am God. Uh, the cross reference here, friends, this is, for me, this was mind blowing. The cross reference is Matthew 18, 3, where Jesus says this, truly, I say to you, unless you turn and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven. Did you catch that? Unless you turn and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. And so, therefore, David says, Oh, Israel, oh, Israel, what? Don't put your help in yourself, in your own strength. Put your help or put your hope in the Lord. Put your hope in the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. Friend, what are you worrying about today? What are you anxious about today? Uh, what are you trying to fix or control in your own strength today? This is saying, oh, Israel, oh, Carmen, oh, fill in the blank with your name. Put your hope in the Lord from this moment and forevermore.